Okay, welcome to episode six. Well, one of the skucks, the lux <laughs> kind of guys here with us. Hey, is that free yeah, flowers? Yeah, the lux, man. We're going to give you your flowers, bro. Like this is what we we'll do every time we get a guest on. So bear with us. Um, Daniel Korn, a country boy from the tiny town of Gorma, but raised in Dubbo. Um, started playing your junior rugby league for Wellington Cowboys and St. George Dubbo. Made a name for yourself as one of the up-and-coming schoolboy rugby league stars coming through and signing with the Canterbury Bulldogs. Oosh. Debuted in 2005 for the Doggies, <laughs> then moved on to play for the Gold Coast Titans and the Sydney Roosters. Played a total of 59 games, but also known for your looks and charm. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> and started getting ooh. into the modelling game and yes. making appearances Monday on reality, conference, reality TV shows like Geordie Shaw hey. and X on the Beach. But not only that, one of the first F45 ambassadors pushing the F45 brand to New Heights, Daniel Conn, a fitness enthusiast, an influencer with over 250k followers on Instagram, an entrepreneur. Welcome to the Easy Project, Daniel Conn. Let's go. Let's go. What a right ride up, man, I feel great right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. That's it. Thanks, no, that's it, man. We always, um, when we get our guests on, we try, we try and do something different, give them their flowers. But welcome, man. How you been? Very good, man. I uh, just relocated to the Gold Coast. So, mm. yeah, just settling into the beautiful life up here. Eh? Yeah. I did miss it. So, yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, yeah, Thanks for yeah. having me, by the way. No, nah, awesome. It. Man, when we when we wrote up the list, definitely you were, you were there, bro. Oh. You, were, you were there on the hit list. Let's get Daniel Korn on, you know, talk about your journey into sort of like um, what this is all about. You know, it is an easy conversation, but we just want to get a rundown on how you've been, what's life been like, the transitioning to, yeah, obviously. Yeah. You know, like... We talk about rugby league careers. You didn't really um, play that many games, but like for me, back then, you're definitely one of the, the up and coming superstars of the game, Thanks, yeah. which probably got cut short. Not to, not like you know, out of your control with, yeah. with the injuries and that. But yeah, man, just wanna just easy chats, man. Yeah, hundred percent. Because I remember playing then. I was like, oh, this guy's a scuck, dude. He shouldn't even be playing. <laughs> know, straight in the mob thing, hey, I was like. Hey. <laughs> But well, when you like, um, you know, when you were like heaps young, man, you were just like real clean, country boy, no yeah, tattoos, no nothing. Yeah, that's corrupted, right. Though. I got heavily corrupted. <laughs> what corrupted you, bro? Was it the doggies? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely the doggies, bro. Like so I I left home when I was uh, when I was 15 mm. and I moved up to Sydney and had a contract with the Waratahs and the Bulldogs at the same time. Yeah. And then when I had to finish year 12, I had to choose which way to go. And obviously the Bulldogs won the comp in 2004. So mm. I was like, I was living in the house and it was like Sonny Bill yeah. and Asatasi, Nate Miles, JT. So wow. I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I've got to play for the play rugby league. So that probably corrupted me at the same time as well though. But yeah, I was pretty blessed, man. I got out of the bush, yeah, age 15. Yeah. So very lucky to get that little start. That, that, that's so crazy. Like I knew you were part of that crew, but I didn't realise that you were part of that crew. Because like, yeah, you debuted like, 2000 and Five was it? Two thousand and five. And they yeah. won a comp in two thousand and four. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, the year before. <laughs> so you would have been, you would have been in and amongst it. It's crazy. I remember going because you know when you're like younger and you get to go to the games and like go into the sheds before like obviously you're, you're playing for them. I remember going into reserve grade sheds and like seeing like JT and all that, and then got to hang around for first grade. I remember looking over and like Mark O'Mealy just rubbing dank rub on his face, <laughs> rubbing it down his it pants, machine, like yeah. full dank rub. And then you got yeah. like Mace and Asatasi and Rennie and Tongs. Mm. You're just sitting there going, whoa, this is, this is crazy. So yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty cool experience. And uh, yeah, in the house, I'm, okay, first, do you remember a guy called Jace Williams? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I remember walking <laughs> into the Bulldogs house with my mum and I was like, I think I just turned 15. Is that, no. Are we talking about the cannonball, Jason Williams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Walking in there and I just remember this, Jace was like tatted up, shirt off, and he was he had like probably 30 boiled eggs <laughs> and he's just peeling it off and just like, you know, like that, I don't know what that <laughs> movie is, and just pushing these eggs in. I remember just walking in thinking, oh, shit, I'm going to have to do that to play <laughs> first grade. <laughs> and the That's house, crazy. yeah, the house was awesome, man. Like, um, I think we like talk about it now with Ren and all mm -hmm. that, like how cool that house was. So, yeah, that was my first sort of uh, glimpse into the NRL at a young age. But that's crazy, man. Yeah, man. it was cool. How was um, we caught up a couple of weeks back um, at the Nines Premier League, man? Yeah. It was good to see you. Like I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, I've been off. But the, you're still killing it, man. Off the grid. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. That's the first time I was saying to you boys. Yeah. The first time I played footy for like ten years or yeah. something. Because um, obviously with the fitness stuff, that kind of took up all my mm. time and. 
kind of didn't think I'd be coming back to, to footy. But no, after playing in that and seeing all the boys, I realised how much I miss it. Like just yeah. being around the guys. Probably should have trained for it because I felt like I would definitely <laughs> yeah. been out of war. Yeah. But um, no, it was an awesome comp. What Ant's done down there with the, the mm. nines, it's going to be a big deal. So yeah, it was good to catch up with all the boys, definitely. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, awesome. let's, let's start, start off with um, your childhood. Give yeah. us a rundown of, you know, Dubbo and yeah, you right growing on. up as a kid. Okay, so I grew up in a on a farm, which was about um, it was about an hour and a half on a bus to the town I went to school with, which was Wellington. But before I went there, I went to a public school and had um, from kindy to year twelve, it had about 20, 25 people in it. Yeah. So in one hut it was high school, and the other hut was primary with one teacher each. And uh, my two sisters were in high school, and I was in the primary, just doing like kindy year one and two in this little school. And then I went to um, to Wellington and played for the mighty Wellow Cowboys. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was a cool, um, cool transition. I think I look back at it and, you know, growing up on the, on a property was awesome. So next door neighbor was like, I think it was 20 minutes on a motorbike to get mm. to a next door neighbor. And then, um, yeah, Wellington for a bit for the mighty Cowboys. Um, then I started to play a bit of rep footy. Uh, went to Dubbo, St. John's there, where it's just got some great footy players like, mm. Bobcat Ryan, Isaiah Yo, like there's some really good footy players wow. out of that school. Um, yeah, and then I was lucky enough in year 10 to get the get the call up to go up and play in Sydney. So I had a choice to play at a few different clubs, as I'm sure you boys did too. And I got swayed to the <clears throat> to the doggies uh, and play a bit of rugby as well. So that was kind of the childhood. Um, but yeah, I crossed paths with you guys uh, playing in probably like junior rep yeah. footies and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was super lucky because uh, I was, yeah, got to play in like the, the like the all the New South Wales like under 19s, under 17s. Yeah. Back in the days when didn't matter where you're from, you just play for New South Wales. Yeah. Like we had like Sunny Bill and all that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just that's too much stuff. I think. Yeah, I it was, that. there was some crazy teams like Galloway and Thaiday. Like when I moved up here like six weeks ago, um, so I went back for Christmas and mum and dad had all this old stuff and went through these pictures of like the under 17s yeah. and 90s New South Wales teams. And yeah, it was pretty cool to see all that and to realize how much, and same as you guys, like how much footy we play when we're young and like in the, in the school and the under, you know, 16, 17, 18. So yeah, that was a pretty cool little experience. And I was really lucky to get to travel a lot. And the same as probably you guys playing in similar rep teams. Um, but yeah, it was a good experience coming down to Sydney, going from a school with, um, you know, 20, 25 people in the whole school yeah. to going to the King School, which is yeah. like a private rugby school, which is like, you probably know how big yeah. that place is. It's got, I think it's 52, <coughs> 52 rugby fields mm. on it. So yeah, uh, it was a bit of a contrast. There. So you so you would have like um, started your journey, obviously coming in a private system, like yeah. doing the union and that. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Right? yeah. So I was in... Back in the bush, I was playing like rugby one day, then, yeah. then lead the next. And then when I came up, had to you know transition into rugby. So I was playing outside centre. But again, like our school team, we had a reunion not long ago, which makes me feel even older. But uh, we had <laughs> like Ben Robinson, yep. uh, Dean Mum, mm. like all these guys that actually went on to play for the Wallabies yeah. and the Tars. So yeah, it was a pretty freakish school team. Um, but yeah, the transition, learning how to... Because it's like two worlds, right? you got the private school rugby world, and then you got like the NRL yeah. doggies year. Yeah. Like it's such a contrast. <laughs> oh, like you know, I was rocking up to school in like, you know, like button up and the blazers. Then you go to the Bulldogs and you just got like mace and all that. Yeah. Just just very different contrast in terms of how to how to live your life and how to go about things. But yeah, cool experience playing rugby as well. Man, how did you how did you control your that environment though? Like having to be the private sector, then the then yeah. coming into like so we call it the dogs of war back then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a massive contrast. So I used to, um, at about midday at boarding school, I had to go get a cab charge and yeah. leave there about one o'clock. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go to that many classes. And I'd get a taxi across to Belmore and do rugby league training, stay the night, eat dinner, and come back to school about 9.30 at night, a couple of days a week. True. So it was a weird sort of contrast. And I guess it was a probably quite a bit of, you know, didn't quite feel yeah. um, settled. Yep. in those but yeah as soon as i got the chance to go bulldogs full time and you know get into the grind of doing mm. a, i think i did the first pre-season uh that was a massive experience so guys like luke Patton and yeah. Corey hughes just 
full dogs of war. So yeah. yeah, it was a mad, mad time. So man, so you would have done. So you would have went to school straight into training like that. Yeah. When you think about it, it's like that's mm. proper full time, mate. Yeah. You wake up, go to school, yeah. then you go into professional training, get amongst the boys, yeah. and then you go back home, do your homework and stuff like that. If you if you did do homework, mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, smart, straight A's, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was weird like that. Like I guess I didn't know anything but footy, and I'm sure you guys are very similar. Um, and then when you start playing footy full time, you kind of you get told, and I remember this, um, my manager, uh, same as he, Ori, mm. I remember we sat down at No Names in, um, in Lyca one day, yeah. and he wrote down every year of what I need to achieve, like in terms of schoolboys, um, you need to play first grade here, uh, then you have to be full time, like in the 17, every year for like, you know, six, seven years, and then played Origin Australia. So in my head, it was kind of like, if I don't hit all those things on the napkin, yeah. I fail. True. So yeah. it was really – and then I got an um, injury, my first proper injury when I was uh, at boarding school, age 17, and I missed playing like Aussie schoolboys and stuff like that. So yeah. it's interesting when you talk about transition and how to – the coping mechanisms because I knew a lot about footy but I didn't know much about when you get injured, how to do the rehab yeah, mentally, true. how that sort of takes you down a different path as well. So a lot of learning as well. I guess you learn on the go, man. Like you, you can remember your first injury and you just go, man, like – how do you what, deal what with now? it? Yeah. How do you deal with this? Like what? What? Like, you know, you just get frustrated, man. You see the boys training. You want to be out there doing that, but yeah. then like you've got nothing else besides. I remember like breaking breaking leg, one arm row, <laughs> like you know, yeah. one legged row on the, on the row, and that was it. That was your training. Yeah. I guess, man, this sucks. <laughs> Especially you when know? you're young, hey? yeah. Like yeah, you're, yeah. You don't really get your head around it. Yeah. No one really teaches you what happens when you get injured. Either. It's no. just like, yeah, you deal with Think it. Back that time, mate. Hey, everyone was just. Onto whatever they're doing, you know yeah. what I mean? You just yeah. focus solely on yourself. But then you – obviously, now you've – in that transition, you've got rugby union, you got rugby league, and you're like, where do I go? So, obviously, mm. the dog dogs of war. Yeah. Did you still have that itch to play that – that be in the rugby union sector? Um, I probably didn't enjoy the rugby as much as I thought I would because I was probably still learning a lot, of the, a lot of the game as well. And because I played so much rugby league growing up and also hanging around those certain guys – Going or like hanging out the Bulldogs house with, you know, all the boys from Queensland, like like Nate and all that, and JT, yeah. and Sonny and and Roy and Eddie Asatasi. So I was I probably got to spend more time doing that sort of stuff mm. opposed to school. So yeah, it was. I'm glad I made that decision. If I went and played with like the Waratahs, I mean, you never know where you might end up. But yeah, yeah, yeah. no regrets yeah. in that. That's it. Eh? Except for a few nights. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, get caught. What's the joints, bro? What's the joints that we used to see each other? Nah. Yeah, so, um, yeah man. Let's uh, like obviously, you know, we we fast forward. Like, bro, what was the feeling like debut wise? Um, Two thousand and five. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, Eighteen. Wow, that's uh, that, like how old were you guys when you debuted? Like, I, I, was pretty, I think I was twenty one. Nah, 20, maybe. Uh, Two thousand six. I debuted. Yeah, so I'm yeah. two years older than you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, eighteen. Yeah, I would have been twenty. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, it was. Uh, I think there was Origin was on, and uh, O'Melia and Bobcat and like Steve Folks mm. came up to me in the weights room. And he's like, you're, "You're playing down in Melbourne this weekend against Ooh. the Storm," and I was like, "Oh shit!" That team was stacked too, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't start their run yet, though. Nah, that was kind of just. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. like Robbie Kearns. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. I was well, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was a trip, man. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was really cool. Mm. Um, down there at Melbourne and just getting to travel mm. and understand what it's like. Yeah. And, and then you get to see guys that have played a lot of first grade, like, you know, Corey Hughes and all those boys that yeah. are just seasoned vets and watching how they go about their business. I think the coolest guy to to watch in terms of professionalism, like guys like Roy Asatasi, mm. he'd be there an hour before, hour after training, and then when he played, he's just like the ultimate professional. Right. And you can see that now. He's still doing the oh, same thing. Yeah. He's a weapon. I you looked know. up to him going up too, man. Yeah. yeah man. I know playing with Roy, he was one of those guys, like you have a night out, he'll be those soda water ones. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. after it, <laughs> we'll go have Maccas or something. <laughs> that guy will get KFC and take all the skin off yeah, and yeah. just eat the chicken. I was like, bro, don't waste the, waste the best <laughs> part, bro. I remember you telling me that story about uh, oh. Raz. Like, um, like when you have a burger, takes the bun off. Yeah. It's just the, just yeah. it's the, the patties yeah, with the patties. <laughs> oh, Just bro. dedicated. Just bro. eat the yeah. burger, mate. Nah, it's um, a good man to have around for a role model, yeah, a mentor. Yeah. yeah, he was awesome. 
And uh, yeah, debut. Who'd you guys debut against? I debuted against. I get. I debuted against a team that I supported my whole life. My Penrith Panthers. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Pul- like Tony Pulitzer, oh, Joe, yeah, John wow. Oliver, and all them. Like man, oh. I was in all of them of them dudes, and I got to debut against them, and we That's got cool. absolutely pumped. <laughs> <laughs> pumped. Like it was like forty to twelve or something. Yeah. But you know, you remember the big league. Yeah. You get the best of the beaten bunch. Yeah, yeah that was debut, mad, I, like, I, I made that like best oh, of the yes. beaten bunch. One try. <laughs> I can remember my stats. I don't want to rattle them. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Did you get but, a try and debut? Yeah. Did you? No. Eddie. Eddie would have. He always nah. just a point at the screen like this <laughs> and do the. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh no. man. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah. man, that's uh, that's crazy. Like you know, obviously with you going back to you with your. With your bulldog time, how did how did like if you look back on it, was it was it a success or? Um, I think I had. I don't think it was a success for me personally. I think it was a great experience. Mm. I'm really blessed to be on it, but I had a, a lot of injuries that were really bad, yeah. um, and I had a misdiagnosed injury, which I really had a bit of resentment towards, like some of the medical yeah. staff there. So, you know, I ended up having um, like I had. I got told I had weak abductors and groins and weak core and I uh, ended up getting my a, a groins cut on both yeah. sides and then um, they went to do and they said, oh, no, you've actually got a hernia. So I went to get hernia done, which was keyhole and I woke up with like 30 staples across my stomach. Oh, oh. So as a s- 17, 18, yeah, nearly 19-year-old going through like I think it was about four or five surgeries in that time and I was just like – this can't be right. So, and yeah. I, was, I was living by my, I was living with Cam Serraldo actually yep. down in, in oh, Cronulla. Zero, my man. I was mainly living Doing at things. Northies. Yeah. But like we're just up the road. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, it was it was a success in terms of I learned a lot um, out of it. I probably had to grow up pretty quick. Um, but yeah, definitely had a lot of injuries in a short period of time, which I think held me back a lot. Um, and then yeah, I was I was lucky to get a lifeline to come up to the Gold Coast mm. when they. In the inaugural sort of first team yeah. up here so that was the next step yeah how yeah. was that like those setbacks give us a rundown how you went through that because obviously you looked like you were living by yourself at that yeah. time down there how did you feel coming going through all that and the operations being wrong and stuff like that yeah i, I definitely because because again i go back to like the napkin right you've got all these things you meant to hit at a certain time and there was nothing on there about if you get injured, mm. how to deal with it. So, yeah, I had I got like diagnosed with uh, depression and all that sort of stuff during that period, and I was um, I got put on all these different medications, which I personally now looking back at it, I don't believe that was the right thing for yeah. me to do. I just I just had no yeah. idea how to handle situations, but like um, yeah, all those all those injuries and setbacks, it, it did help me build something that I didn't realize I was going to use later on in life in terms of like resilience and adversity. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm really grateful for that experience. Because if I didn't have that and just say, you know, you go through and you you, you play really well for a few games and then you might get to the age 23 and then you have something and you don't know how to handle it then. So Mm -hmm. I went through that process of learning all that stuff early in my career. So I guess that's the bit I'm sort of grateful for. Yeah, no, awesome, man. No, it's awesome. Like um, we talk about that, like we talk about the setback in injuries and – Sometimes you are left alone to deal it with it your yeah. own, and like we get taught today to speak up, talk to your mate, connect with you know your loved ones and all that to make sure that things are going okay. Yeah, and it's hard. It's probably the hardest thing. I remember like having having a, a neck injury. Yeah, and it's like it's the same. You would have had the same too. And this guy, damn, you just go off on a going off a, a tirade of like just 100%. bad habits and that, and then yeah. you lucky you got the support around you to bring you back in. Yeah, yeah. To get you through. It's coping mechanisms, yeah, right? That's what yeah. I mean. Like, everyone copes differently. Yeah. So yeah, there might be ten people and they have the same injury. Yeah. Everyone's gonna go yeah. yeah a different way to do it. What did you do to your neck? Did you Yeah, I had the I had the this you, replacement. Yeah. So I, I, I think I remember like maybe having a little bit of a chat with you with your with yeah, your yeah. neck one too. Would have been quite yeah. Similar. It's um yeah, like Newcastle threw me a lifeline. Like they yeah. they fixed me up and, and got me yeah, got me going right. again. Yeah, but yeah. but I, like forever grateful for that club because like man, the surgery that I got was just like Terry. it's like revolutionised now. Yeah. Like you know what yeah. I mean? It's just like it's an artificial disc replacement. Yeah, well, you should be should be retiring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but nah, played on for another eight years wow. after I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's wow. good. That's crazy. But, yeah. How did you do? So, how did you deal with that? Like, I know with all those injuries and you go through all that, 
And then you're like, okay, did you ever sit back and go, do I just keep playing or? Yeah, what, what I, I kind of, the... in my head, I think the way I was sort of brought up was just like, you just keep going. So mm. I actually, I was self-medicating for years and years. And even before I came to the Gold Coast and before I went to the Roosters, anything when it came to injury, it was just like push through it. Yeah. And if I can take this to push through it, I will. Yeah. Yeah. And then it became not just for games, for training. And then it wasn't just for training. It was just for every day. Yeah. And then you just like, you build up like, like a scary tolerance to it. So I guess when I sort of get yeah, coming to the Gold Coast, again, I had another six or seven surgeries in the first two years. And that third year I had another surgery, which put me back for ages. And then I got thrown a lifeline to go to the Chooks. Mm. Um, and I went down there, clean my act up, um, and that obviously 2010 was it was a really yeah. good year for me. Yeah, I remember that year. Um, GF. Yeah, yeah, I went to the yeah. GF, which was epic experience. Um, and then you know, again, the injury started to come the next year, and then it was up here playing against uh, playing against the Titans, Roosters v Titans, and I just went into a tackle, and it was just before the concussion rule came yep. in, and I remember seeing the video, so. I, Got, went into a tackle and just got flush, hit someone's uh, hip, um, knocked myself out cold, got up, stumbled around, jumped into the scrum as we did yeah, back then. Yeah, 100%, yeah. Um, but it turns out there was a crack on the vertebra and the disc had toothpasted down my spinal Ooh. column. But again, that week, I, I got injected into my neck, some local anaesthetic, yeah. um, and they just fed me painkillers and I was going to play the next week. And unfortunately... Uh, fortunately, I got a s different scan done um, and then it showed up there was a crack. Yeah. So I was about to play with a broken neck and I was like, well, this is... That's crazy, man. Yeah, like just... Studio <laughs> care. Stupidity, <laughs> yeah. So I was in ICU in 40, 48 hours, um, which was like a blessing in disguise. But at the same time, yeah, I sort of go into this story. So went into ICU uh, 48 hours later, came out... Oh, sorry, 24 hours later, came out of all the surgery. I was laying in bed and uh, my mum came up because I was, I was using all the pain because I had a tolerance, right? Yeah. Like a scary tolerance to, to morphine and stuff. I was like, oh, it's still hurting. And the doctor was like, I'm not too sure why he's still awake. He should be sound asleep. And my mum came up at the end of the night um, to sort of say goodbye. And she came in and gave us a little, a little cuddle. I was mm. laying on the bed out cold. Uh, and she's like, oh, it's weird. He's, um, he's gargling. And she went to talk to the nurse and goes, oh, I think he's, he's gargling. It doesn't sound right. And the nurse came over and I was like, my lung was, I think it was about 75% full of fluid. Oh, so I'd wow. um, got pneumonia in my lungs Ooh. just because of the amount of medication. Yeah. And of course, having a tolerance over those years of playing footy, my tolerance was, was pretty crazy for that. So yeah, so that was uh, pretty scary. So I got rushed yeah. into ICU and had like a tube, tubes coming out of me everywhere. I had to get sat up for another 24 hours in, in ICU. So that was a real big eye opener and that's when came out of that little period that week and the doctor was kind of like you know you're at a very high risk of injuring your neck again because of the way the bone sits mm. now and the disc and the screws and the plates yep. um and he just said i would recommend you you think about a different career and that was kind of like a different career you yeah. know like i got my napkin here man like yeah next yeah. year i meant to do this this and mm. this so yeah, it was, uh, it was a crazy experience. Uh, I'm very grateful it happened the way it did, but yeah, it was a pretty scary time the oh, way it all crazy, went down. Man. Yeah, man, very it's lucky, crazy. bro. 25, yeah. eh? You, 25, yeah. Oh, you were still yeah. young. You were peaking that time yeah. too. Yeah, I'd like to think so. But yeah, it was um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. But again, like that was a different, like we're talking about there. So yeah. these days it is encouraged to talk about it and, and yeah. things are very public and it's, it's good to have a chat about. I think in that... Um, early 2000s to 2010, yeah. it was kind of like, just keep going, get yeah. it done, going, just, just rip like, in, yeah. Yeah, you know, train like, hard, yeah. play hard. That's it, man. <laughs> no, yeah. you don't want to show the coaches that you're weak. No. You know, just get just on the, the field and just do it. But really, you're playing with a busted rib, busted yeah. knee, and you're like going out there and doing your best, and it goes, mate, like I can't keep doing this. It's hard, eh? Because sometimes when you're out training, you know you're injured, but you're like, I just get through because the ball's going to mock me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Or you might not make the team yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like crazy. that's that's the that's the hardest thing, eh? Yeah. He's like, you know, now like towards the back end of your career, you're just going, nah, I'm, yeah, my knees bung, I'm out. <laughs> 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 no, so yeah, nah, okay. so you know, I don't, I don't need to prove myself. I'm I'm done, it's you know. Yeah, mentality. but it's like, so, yeah. yeah, but like, you know, back then, I can't show these guys I'm weak. Yeah, <laughs> you know, 
can't show them you're weak, bro. You just got to keep plugging on and just no, no, playing. No. I think, like I remember that time yeah. we, I got knocked out at training. Mm. Coach is like, play on, bro. Get yeah. up. And we're like, pa. <laughs> I can't <laughs> see you, bro. <laughs> bro, do you know that you actually knocked me out? Did I? Yeah, man. We were playing. Um, oh, and I think I remember. Rabbitohs. And you. <laughs> he always remembers, bro. Off the back fence. <laughs> and your head hit my. I've still got a scar, man. Oh, like a oh, massive scar on my chin. Yeah. And your head hit it. And I just was like. In seeing stars, and for like a week after, I had like a Roger Ramjet jaw. Oh, no <laughs> I had to get my chin drained from oh, your head. Yeah. Oh, wow. I forgot to the tell you that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't phase you, you were sweet. Yeah. I think I was only young and hungry at that time. Young buck. So, um, okay, when did you accept that though? When did you accept walking away from the game and moving on? Uh, probably not up until a couple years ago, yeah. to be completely True. honest. Oh, yeah. Wow. So I didn't, I was, um, sort of going to like the yeah. next sort of chapter so um yeah once i finished footy i was i, I was lucky i did some pt qualifications yeah. when mm -hmm. i was still playing um so i went into uh personal training and i kind of picked up that same mentality of just like going 100 miles an hour you know trying to do a million things at once with mm -hmm. the footy mentality yeah but still having to watch the boys yeah. still play and interacting with some of the players and you kind of get a bit filthy that you can't yeah. Into, into like you know play with them train with them type of thing so yeah i went on to the next sort of phase into the in the fitness world mm. but i don't think i actually like let it go in terms of okay that's cool that was yeah. my journey that was a different yeah you know, that's that's that isn't who i am now but that was you know a part of what i'm about so that wasn't yeah up until probably 2022 Wow. Yeah, wow. 2021, yeah. But it's crazy. You got like you still can influence, you still can inspire. You got the mad story. Like, you know, you you're, you know, I don't want to shoot you down, but like you were the the good up and coming superstar coming up through, you know, as a young the kid. But like, stuff like that. Yeah. you can be the definition of someone like, hey, it doesn't always go to plan. Yeah. You know, but like you've got to just find a way to get through life yeah. and yeah. And, and and find another passion. Cause that's yeah, um, true. That's, that's something that we're talking about yeah. at the moment, eh? like with our body. Yeah. Like having a plan B. And yeah. yeah. Did you have a plan B? Like obviously nah. you had to, mm. yeah. I mean, I, I did the, we kind of had to when we were at the tight. And so I did learn, you know, Cert 3, Cert 4 in yep. the PT yeah. space because I loved training and mm. what it was yeah. about. And I kind of thought that would help me be a better footballer. Yeah. So I was always coming back to mm. that. But I never really got encouraged with the plan B. Obviously the last 10 years, it's it's evolved a lot more. But I think um, the transition is such a huge thing to talk about. Yeah. 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 Cause a lot of guys like, like I happened with me, it didn't sort of kick in yeah. it's like 10 years after I stopped playing. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, wow, well, that was a big transition. Like 100%. some people go different times. Like it might be just after two years, three years, yeah. but yeah, everyone's a bit different. I think. The so transitions. Take, take us into that transition now. So your transition now from rugby league, you're kind of, I've, for me, when I seen you, every time I see you, I'm like, bro, this guy's the face of every fitness yeah. place. Like, <laughs> like, I'm driving, like, but that's that good. This guy's <laughs> yeah. bigger than rugby league. Yeah, nah, man. man. That, I, was, I was really lucky with that. So I, uh, so, yeah, I think it sort of came about with all the reality TV stuff. Yeah. And then off the back of that, I met, um, met Rob, who was one of the founders of F45, yeah. Yeah. Um, just in Bondi. And he asked me to come to the Paddington, which is where the first one was yeah. in, in White City and went to Paddo and did a few sessions with Rob. And then he was like, I, I, I do the programming. If you want to have a look at the programming. And so that's where it sort of started to, and then I started just doing the pro, then it sort of just escalated. And that, yeah. that business went fast. Yeah. Bro, like, that went quick, man. man, man I, all I remember at F45 back then was just you, bro. Was you. Yeah. Like, I felt like you were the, I thought you were the reason behind that going, I wish. going to the heights. I was it just, did. I was I was lucky on that. Like, um, yeah, I got to go around to like in 2013, then just sort of escalate. And then we got to a point um, where I was going to different states to open all the new ones in you know Brizzy and, and WA, and then it was different countries. Mm. Yeah. First one in the US, first one in the UK, first one in Singapore. Yeah. Like it was a cool experience, but again, I was just I was go 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 100 mm. miles an hour. At one stage, I think that was selling. 15 20 franchises a week no wow. way <laughs> no yeah. way so crazy do you reckon it's definitely one of the fastest growing like oh hands uh, down like is there a documentary on on the f45 there should be i think there will eventually because it's a bit of like wolf of wall street yeah. as well the way it's sort of yeah the people behind it and how fast things and it was pretty it was a, i learned a lot about business in terms of 
ruthless and how yeah. you got to be really there's no emotion in the business it's mm -hmm. got to be it's a numbers game and yeah. how things work so yeah it was interesting to learn um from those guys yeah so yeah that was an interesting chapter. do you reckon it was pretty cool because obviously now in the u.s they had all those F f45 studios there but seeing your face over there as well yeah that was crazy i mean i, I think i was the cause it, filming the videos just to give you some context so the video you see on f45 screen back when i was doing it was like you had to film them for about 45 seconds and it was done in a studio so I, I came up with like what the exercises were the name of them and you had to do like a big spreadsheet of it and then you had to film it so it was on a cement floor with all these guys um doing sound mm -hmm. and all this sort of stuff so if you're doing burpees, you're on a cement floor. You got to do about film about ninety a day, and your body would just be smashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're doing all these weird exercises. Like let's be honest, there's stuff in F45. You're like, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's when you can see my brain was like, ah, we'll just call this one. And nah, it was um, it was cool. But yeah, we ended up, uh, we, yeah, just going to different. Like I think we, in WA we're doing like two or three F45s a day, mm. and then in the US, the first one actually opened in um, Ohio this like in the in the snow the first f45 but yeah it was, it was crazy yeah yeah crazy trip did you get to meet mark Wahlberg? <laughs> yeah i met i met, uh, met marky once but i just i kind of got out before he sort of yeah. came in oh, and, yeah. and rob exited just before he um sort of signed up big and they publicly listed mm. and then it was valued at 1.3 billion wow, wow. yeah it's crazy 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 yeah Man. so you've been all over the industry of the, the fitness industry I've seen, I remember you, the face of Orange Therapy. Is it Therapy? Or Orange Theory, yeah. Theory, so sorry. I was working with, I was the wellness director at um, CWG, which owns yeah. Anytime Fitness and Orange mm -hmm. Theory and, and Extend Bar. So that was kind of the little bit after F45 yeah, doing yeah. that stuff, which was, again, I got to go into, it wasn't like F45 was quite fun and like very reactive, yeah. like a lot of marketing campaigns, whereas that was... Anytime fitness, a bit more corporate sense. I was yeah. in the office with like 60, 70 people. Yeah. So it was a different sort of experience for me for that 12 months. And then um, after that, I kind of got involved with creating and starting new concepts. Uh, so hustle boxing was a part of the first mm. one, which yeah. is, it's pretty cool. It's like a nightclub where you do boxing and running and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, then I sort of stepped into high altitude training. Yeah. It's yeah. the next sort of transition into that but yeah there's so many like even coming up to gold coast there's so many different types of gyms and fitness things going on yeah. up here yeah it's, yeah, it's on steroids it's the epic center Insane. i reckon yeah <laughs> everyone wants to open up a gym up here everyone's crazy so fit up here yeah and they're oh, fit no. too uh, yeah. it's crazy hey eh? you going you gonna have a crack at the turf games oh no <laughs> <laughs> get that's, into it bro that's beyond me man yeah. Yeah. well i, I want to go back geordie shaw yeah <laughs> Wow. Tell us, mate. <laughs> I want to know about it. <laughs> How, How did that happen? How did huh? that happen? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was doing personal training at uh, a gym in Coogee. Yeah. And uh, this is like 2013, I think. Yeah, 12, 13, some of that. And uh, this, this group of people came in and there was a few cameras. They weren't actually filming in there. And it was all these pommy chicks and pommy blokes. And, and I was just, you know, went and said g'day and I just didn't think much of it. Um, and then the, I think it was a, one of the producers came up to us and was like, oh, would you be interested in doing a PT session for the girls at the house? And I had no idea what it was at that time. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, sweet. Like, oh, what are you guys paying? And, yeah, yeah. and they're like, oh, I just come over for a bit of, you know, publicity. I was like, okay, sounds all right. Um, so, yeah, I went over to the house in like South Coogee and I got there and there's this huge ass house. And I was like, this is odd. Mm. And I opened the garage and I sort of, automatically open and there was just like camera crews like and i was like what the fuck is this man? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like oh the girls are upstairs which gonna mic you up and i just i just kind of went with the flow i was like yeah yeah cool um then we got up there and i tried to do a pt session but yeah. i realized like they couldn't give a shit like, yeah. they, they were just they were loose man they were loose oh, they were okay. really loose um and then it ended up this is a good story actually and then it ended up they did like they invited me back um because i sort of started to hang out with that vicky girl who's mm. she's a champion chick and they said oh we've got a silent disco um do you want to come to it and i said oh yeah can i bring some mates and i was like <laughs> and they, they said yeah yeah okay so I ended up i think it was when like dukes was like maybe playing origin or something yeah, yeah, i got yeah. dukes to come and um other mate brado and we're at this silent disco and like 
they, they were like this loose. So we just thought we'd have to like Match come in a little bit <laughs> higher. <laughs> so, and they didn't, luckily they didn't um, have any footage of like show any footage of Dugs or what he yeah, was yeah, doing. Yeah. But man, we were loose. Like we were carrying on yeah. proper. Um, so we <laughs> mid origin campaign yeah, with dudes. right near origin, <laughs> but it was yeah, it was it was a good time. Anything makes the papers back then. Oh, anything man. that how Just that to... didn't get yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that it was be funny. Yeah, it was good fun, man. But uh, yeah, did that a few episodes there, and then they sort of got me on a few times to do the Geordie Shaw stuff. Um, and then when that all sort of went. I uh, got asked to go do X on the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that. <laughs> All right, That's that crazy. was that was a trip. That uh, yeah, they flew me to Spain. Mm. Yeah, and I was waiting in a hotel for like forty eight hours by myself, like yeah. just contact with one person. And I was like, what? It like I haven't really told my family where I am either. So oh, I, was, no <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in Spain, and then um, I said, what you got to do is we're gonna drop you like just out on the water, and you have to swim in, and that's the first scene. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. So they, uh, the thing is that the yeah. waves are pretty big and I can't yeah. swim that well. Yeah. <laughs> so I come in and like just like not coming out my nose and the camera's like this. Yeah. Uh, and then it was on. It was just like two weeks straight mm. of filming in uh, Marbella. But that, that was pretty crazy. And then after that, I went and stayed uh, with Vicky in Newcastle with yeah. the parents. Yeah. And I didn't. that's when I sort of realized how big it was over there. Like yeah. we just went down the street and there was people – no coming up, way, going, oh, man. you're fucking fit, done, man. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah fit, done, that's right. <laughs> fit, fit, I didn't done, even know what that yeah. meant there for a while, but yeah, it was pretty fun, man. Yeah, a bit what of a an experience, nah, man. That's awesome. How yeah. was that experience, though? Like, yeah, obviously, you've always been in the scenes, like mm. in NRL, bro. You're the you're the model of NRL, uh, yeah. pretty much, eh? 100% on the calendar, will. like Greg Mate. Bird tries to take the yeah. calendar. Yeah, Bird, yeah. come on, man. Birdie, man, come on, man. Yeah, no, there's there was plenty of those boys getting around, but no, it was a. Look, it was, a, it was a cool experience in terms of getting to understand another realm to what I could do in yeah. terms of and how, how you can use your profile yeah. differently. I guess I just had a bit of a, a little bit of a footy profile in those early days Skuck, and, then, mm. and then I got to understand the, the media world and then it was that sort of reality TV. And then you start to get like a bit of a different yeah. following and yeah. then you can really sort of work out how – you can influence and impact yeah, and yeah. sort of help people out as well. So that was when the fitness Yeah, because you were like pretty out. much like, I feel like you knew what leveraging was way back and you're leveraging off like, you know, obviously your footy career, but then you're like, obviously your good looks and charm, you, you're, you're <laughs> getting in there and doing that stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I guess I, I think I, had, I got Instagram and stuff yeah. way early and that was purely off the back of, I think some some random person told me to get it just as I was doing PT yeah. before yeah. I met all the Geordie Shaw stuff. So, and and all that. So Twitter. So you weren't keen that. on that. You weren't keen. Yeah, on no, that. I didn't have much Crazy. of it all. So I kind of understood how to capitalize mm. on that stuff. And that's like in those early days, like 2015 stuff. Like you could make decent money doing yeah. social media stuff, mm. and then it just became flooded. Yeah. And then now people that do legit and stuff that's you know for the right reasons and yeah. now starting to shine out so watching people you know like even doing these sort of podcasts like yeah. they're getting this sort of stuff out there and people that are doing um mental health stuff yeah. in all the in all the social aspects that's the stuff that's actually mm. now like all the algorithms are just pumping that sort yeah. of stuff opposed yeah. to back in the day was you know you smile and yeah. you hold up a can of teeth whitening <laughs> yeah. or something yeah. Just like, oh, bro, <laughs> no one's gonna buy it. <laughs> everyone's, yeah. everyone's uh, doing the sneaky gym reels yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, those ones that you <laughs> that actually they're doing pretty good the gym reels yeah. were there traits obviously there would have been some traits that you learnt growing up as a rugby league player yeah transitioned into the the game that you're doing in the business business side of things yeah I mean there was there's, I think, I guess we all sort of learn when we're young, like loyalty is a big thing. Yeah. So I also got to understand that, you know, loyalty is one thing, but, you know, you have to learn how to have documentation, contracts, signatures. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, in business, people, they don't care. Yeah. You know, they don't care. But in a, in a 40 team, like people care what you, what you say to me, your word, like I trust that and, yeah. and vice versa. But uh, in business, I guess I, I learned that isn't how things work in the sporting world opposed to the business world. Um, so I learned a lot of valuable lessons um, through F45 days and then ongoing about the business stuff. But you still, the, the, the work ethic sort yeah. of carried over and understanding how to, like in rugby league, when we were young and, you know, d doing our thing, you realise you've got an impact on certain people, you yeah. know, like whether it's signing days, mm. you're like, oh, wow, these people actually know my name. And 
um, you know, you do some promotional work and advertising and then when it transfers into the business sense, you're like, oh, okay. And I guess the kids these days, when I say kids, young, young fellas these days are a bit more on the ball like that. Yeah. You know, like there's plenty of guys that have done it quite well post-game, but now you see the guys during their career and they're actually capitalising on yeah. how yeah. to market themselves. Yeah. They've probably got some people helping them out as well, like a, a smart manager or someone by their side. Yeah, but the smart guys, they might be earning X and they've got advertisements and all this stuff pumping. So yeah. it's, a, it's a good way to sort of transition that for those boys. Did you have a mentor? Um, obviously, once you stood out, like jumped out of the bubble, the rugby league bubble. Yeah. And you kind of done your own thing there. Did you have a mentor? Did you have someone to lean on to? Or uh, at that not time? really a mentor. I'd say I've never really had like someone that I was like molding myself around. Yeah. Um, had a few people. I liked their traits. Um, but yeah, not really so much a mentor in the business world. Um, with Rob Deutsch, she was the guy that started F45. Yeah. Watching how he went about like business and how he made money, I was like, wow, I want to do it how that guy does it. So. You know, I learned, I sort of like studied how he did things and, and took what I like yeah. um, and tried to sort of to use that. But yeah, there's, yeah. And then going into other business, like the guys, I want, the main guy, Richard Pell, who's like the big dog, Anytime Fitness, yeah. like he owns Central Coast Mariners, like yeah. he's a bulldog. And also learning how he goes about business. Like he's, yeah. he's not, a, not a huge guy, but he's a scary dude. Yeah, if you're yeah. sitting down with him, he looks in your eye, like, oh shit. Hmm. Like he's the man. So... It was just learning like in our sport, right? Like uh, you have to be the best player or yeah. all the, you know, have to be a bit of a dog to get that respect. Mm. Or in the business world, you've got to be smarter. Yeah. yeah. And then usually the guys that don't say much, they're sitting in the background going, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're sort of tuning away. So I also learned um, it doesn't matter how much publicity stuff, you have to be smart too. Like you've got to use it. So you might have a, a window where – you can do a certain thing with um, like social media. Yeah. You have to be smart with it. You know, and the, the message you convey, you got to make sure in three months' time that doesn't come back and bite you on the ass with all mm. these other sponsors and advertisements. You got to be kind of calculated. Yeah. I guess that's what the business sort yeah, of stuff yeah. taught me. Oh, that's yeah, bad. try to anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you um, you know, like when you look at that F forty five movement, do you think like a lot of these gyms that are popping up now, is that where like all these boutique gyms come from like come from like past trainers that have come out of the f45 yeah. and and just taken that model but put their own little spin to it 100 percent. like the amount of uh x f45 trainers or people involved that have now i mean i could i could rattle off so many yeah. different businesses that you guys would know up here that have come from that sort of space they've seen what f45 has done and they're like oh, i can do that yeah. and they go off and do their own but i think what some people forget is the the sort of how ferocious F45 was with like the marketing and how quick that growth was. It's very hard to replicate. The training they might be able to replicate, but then if you've got like, you know, all these people from XF45 going and starting their things, you've got to make sure you're doing something different. Because yeah. if you go away and go, I'm going to do what they did, yeah. and then I go, well, I'm doing that as well. Next minute you've got another. Yeah. So there's quite, it's such a competitive market. Um, so it's always like any gym, right? Like, you look at all these gyms and if you put it down to the the if you just strip it back the training's really similar yeah everyone's going there to get to get fit and healthy yeah that's basically gyms right so it comes down to it's a people business yeah. so if you have good people involved with with those gyms and you can replicate those same good people like that's how gyms are doing so well now so do you feel that. like um if you been working at a gym for a very long time and you want to outgrow that space mm. like it's hard for like people that do own the gyms to keep a hold of their really good trainers and that because yeah. they find them just nah i've grown so much here and yeah. you know they, they're grateful for their time working at the gym do you feel like they go. go off and do something else and start their own yeah little vibe it's very hard like the gyms that i've had or been involved with holding a good trainer so because the other gym down the road they want a good trainer too yeah. And the more you praise you give that person, which they rightly, you know, deserve to get, they start to realize, oh, hang on, you know, I, I can do this myself. Yeah. I don't. So uh, that's just it, people evolving, I guess, with trainers and everything. But yeah, so many trainers are starting to get pretty clever, saying, oh, why would I work for these gyms when I can start my own business? Yeah. I can do it online. I can train when I want, be my own boss. So yeah, a lot of gyms lose good trainers yeah. because of that, which is sad, but. 
that's kind of the evolution yeah, of yeah. it, I suppose. What is, what is the most popular thing going around at the moment when you look at, because CrossFit's massive, you've yeah. got the strength and conditioning base, and then you've still got the F45 still lurking around. Yeah, you I know, guess, what is, oh, I mean, that is, just, again, just my opinion. Yeah. But yeah, CrossFit won't be going anywhere. They just sort of chip away. They mm. do their thing. They have their community. F45 in Australia is different to US. Mm. Like, it's so different. Like, in the US, F45 is a big deal because you've got such high pro file people still pushing it yeah where i think in australia f45 isn't as supported as what it used to be yeah because it used to be the thing in australia like everyone was talking about f45 mm. and you on social media it's just yeah. f45 whereas now you know there's so many different gyms it's hard to sort of see that f45 is still going up in australia yeah but there's yeah there's so many fran like the yards and other franchises is doing quite well um but like even just cruising around Burley here, yeah. there's probably four or five gyms that look exactly like the yard that are doing similar training. Yeah. Again, it just comes down to the people. So yeah, yeah. yeah th like where do you guys train at? That's active. Active, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been to that one yet, but I've seen what they do. Mm. It's uh, yeah, it's cool. Again, the, if good people there, yeah. Yeah. you're always gonna drive past five gyms to get to that one. Yeah, yeah but gyms is a tough space. Even when um, like I decided to go out on my own, and do something different because I didn't want to do, you know, what everyone else was doing. And that's when I got into high altitude training. Yeah. And that was that was a really big involvement trying to teach people um, to understand high altitude. Have you guys ever done it? Yeah. We've done a couple we did of it, times. I, I, I've done a couple of air locker sessions. Yeah, yeah. How'd yeah. you find it? Yeah, it was tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Like trying to educate people at the same time to do all the marketing mm. is quite tough as well. But if someone's like guys like you that have got that athlete mentality and you tell me um, you can increase your VO2 max by 30% every time you train here mm. opposed to another gym, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to train here. Yeah. But general pop's a little bit tricky. But yeah, there's so many gyms popping up. Yeah, yeah. I reckon you guys would probably know more than me. Yeah, <laughs> 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 where to go. No, but hey, you're, hey, you're still up here. You're still part of the game, man. Yeah. Any, yeah. Any, what about you? You're going to be thinking about opening up? One soon? <laughs> oh, if I was going to do a gym, I, I wouldn't do it by myself. I want to yeah. do it with some other people, I mm. guess. But um, yeah, at the moment, man, I just uh, probably enjoying, sorry, stepping away from that space. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been doing some consulting, like yeah. going into some local gyms and they sort of give them my feedback yeah, and how yeah. they're doing their marketing and their sales mm. campaign. And I don't mind numbers, actually. Yeah. I know that sounds weird, but I love numbers. It's a numbers like game, spreadsheets. Man. Yeah. I love all that stuff. Oh, man. Yeah. I never well, used to like, so I was terrible at school. Yeah. Unlike you guys, well, you're good at math, so. <laughs> 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 no, but I, I kind of got like hooked on all that stuff just from those businesses learning that, you know, it's all about the, the bottom line and, you know, learning all that. I, yeah. I love that stuff now. So now you're obviously, give us a rundown of what you're doing now. Uh, at the moment, I uh, just moved to Burley, uh, Burley Heads with my girl. Yeah. Uh, she's from Melbourne. So she, her and I are just loving living up here. She's a dentist, starts work today. Cool, yeah. nice. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so she's gonna get stuck into that. Um, and the stuff I'm doing, yeah, with Toddy Carney, mm. yeah, uh, yeah. it's called Be a Believer. Yeah. Nice, and that's nice. uh, it's kind of like a little hub that we're gonna be looking at helping uh, some kids in school transitioning from year six into year seven. Yeah, yeah. So more teaching about life skills. Yep. So stuff that they're probably not gonna get at school or at yep. home. It's kind of like giving them situations where they can understand what they can do or, and how they can sort of problem solve themselves. That's my, um, that's my then that's year, work, year seven and eight, which is that vulnerable year, yeah. um, sort of teaching them some understanding life skills again. And then we want to get into the men's group stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I reckon that's huge, like what you guys are doing yeah. here. But um, there's so many men's groups that have a niche, yeah. um, but there's just so many men out there that I think need more of these type of conversations yeah. where it's a safe environment, talking about you know the highs and lows of their week, mm. what do they face with, how can they problem solve that? Yeah, Because... Uh, yeah, that's a big passion of mine. And like we was talking about before, it's taken me a long time to realize that, you know, I might not have uh, the footy side and all the, all the, you know, the TV and the F45 stuff now, but now I look back at it and there's a huge chapter and that chapter I think is given to me to sort of go back and sort of help other people, yep. similar to what you're doing yeah. as well um, yeah. with Toddy Carney, you know, that's a... A big thing because he's got a cool story. Yeah, yeah. 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 You get the TC on, TC bro. You're yeah. listening. Uh, You're on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you should get like Chrissy Walker on here. There's yeah, some good yeah. Stories, we reach out to Chrissy. Man, so yeah. Yeah. we're just still waiting for the rip. Nah, he, he replied. <laughs> he replied. Dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, but he's um, just um, living it up in Vegas. Yeah. Him and um, we had Mick Crawley on. Um, oh yeah. A couple of weeks ago, so he was pretty good. And, um, and he just came over from, come back from the Vegas trip too. 
How good. Yeah. Yeah, so. Walks is uh, <laughs> very well behaved these days. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. been training with him a bit, so yeah. He's, <laughs> he's looking good, bro. Yeah. I've seen you too, hey, man. He's yeah. shredded. Uh, both of you are jacked. Both of you are shredded. Uh, Walks has got some, something going on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have to get that test. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll, get him, we'll get him on then. We'll get him yeah, on. Yeah, hit him up. Yeah. Did he get yeah. the up? Did he get the up or? <laughs> oh, he looks yeah, but like because uh, he broke his leg. Yeah. Did you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. Bro. So yeah, so he's coming back on the peptides and all that stuff to help his leg. But yeah, he'd be a cool story too. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely get him on. I'll definitely help you guys with some other people to get on. Oh yeah, 100%. for sure, man. We no, love that. Appreciate that, man. Because you're looking for mainly like men to come on and have that chat. Women, Anyone? men. Yeah, Anyone, cool, yeah. man. Yeah, How good. Yeah. Just all right, man. Key message. Key message. Yeah. Bro, we we usually give out a key message to our audience. What's your key message, bro? Uh, just in life in general, like uh, it could be anything, you know about just business related whatever i think um like on a personal thing it'd be uh, to be present all the time so yeah. not worried so much i used to be fixated on what was going to happen yeah. and yeah shit what did i do wrong what was that what was the mistake there instead of kind of the here and now and just being yeah. in the moment um so that's probably a big thing for myself um but that's that's one thing i like to make sure people when i'm with them they're present um, there's no egos involved and it's just being in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Because I see, always get fixated on, you know, things that we're going to do. I think that comes from footy, right? Yeah, you always, yeah. fucking game next, this week, yeah, yeah. Just played shit last week. Then in business as well, that didn't happen. That should have happened. Yeah. But when you're just here and now, I always seem to have better results with what's coming and what's been. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah hard so living the now, man. No, I like that. Now. I like that. Yeah. No, nah, man, like... Very humbly, man. I know you're a humble person, and I know like um, when we when Eddie reached out to you, I knew that like yeah, we'll get him, we'll get him on, man. That's good, man. Like 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 we always say, it's always going to be an easy conversation when we come on here, and just make it nice and flowing. But it's yeah. awesome to hear the stories, especially I about like us. your journey of what mm -hmm. you've done within the fitness industry. Pretty random, like man. your yeah, <laughs> but, but it's mad, bro. Like and that's <laughs> what everyone wants to hear, yeah, man. Hundred percent. Fit Dan's getting up to these days. <laughs> I know, man. Because <laughs> literally, bro, <laughs> hey, you look at F45, it's Dan. They're like, yeah. that's it. Like, uh, that's yeah, man. that's yeah. all I see, bro. Yeah. It was cool. It was a cool chapter. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But yeah, I wish I had just had shares in it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. Like everyone, hey, everyone. Yeah. Like, man, I wish uh, I had shares in that place. Yeah. And no, I was a cool. Like, again, you got to use that that part of your life to sort of yeah. do better now and help mm. other people. Lots of bigger things, man. No, nah, that's, that's good, man. I, 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 love, I love what you're going to get up to. You know, especially with Toddy, yeah. bro. It's a massive space that needs yeah. like everyone can get into that space, man. Yeah. And it's good, man. It's good. Like we can definitely collab, do yeah, things yeah. together as well. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Love that. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for coming down. Thanks, and for, having uh, thanks chat, for that. Bro. For the man. Nice and easy. <laughs> Let's go. Nice and easy. All right.